These migratory pied avocets, probably from thousands of kilometers away, have made a pit stop in a pond in India's national capital, Delhi. Numerous small water bodies surrounded by roads, residences and industries, often seen as polluted and devoid of life, dot the city. And they house resident and migratory birds. But this urban biodiversity is often understudied and ignored. The National Capital Territory of Delhi, or NCT Delhi, is home to over 400 bird species. And a recent study that focused on Delhi's urban ponds found around 37% of the capital's bird species in these small water bodies. The researchers defined ponds as water bodies less than 5 hectares. With the help of Google Earth satellite visuals over 10 years and different seasons, the team identified 574 wetlands of various sizes in Delhi. Out of these, ponds made up just 0.5% of the city's area, but were bustling with birds. The idea is to try and learn a lot more about water birds and the habitats that they are in. So ponds are uh, sort of a natural segue into that because uh, they are one of the least studied ecosystems in the world and the least studied wetlands in the world as well. And when you further sort of narrow your lens and go into urban ponds, then that is a subject that's almost unstudied outside of the developing, uh, outside of the developed world. We did not expect such a large variety of birds and such a large diversity of birds to still be existing in such small water bodies because the water bodies that we ended up visiting were as small as 0.2 hectares and went up to all the way to 5 hectares. So being, being able to count such a large diversity was a matter of great excitement for us because this was also the first study which did a city-wide estimation of bird diversity using ponds inside a city. Ponds ranging from natural to artificial inside parks to waterlogged areas attract birds, big and small, some whose populations are declining at an alarming rate. So most of these ponds, I classify them into three categories. First, the natural ponds, which have managed to survive the urbanization and still continue to remain in these cities. Second, are constructed ponds, which are specifically constructed for some kind of human purpose. So maybe it could be agricultural, or maybe it could be uh, recreational purposes. And the last are accidental ponds, which serve no purpose, which got created maybe due to over flooding, over sewage, water, being collected in a place or rainwater accidentally getting collected in a place. So these are the three kind of ponds that I witnessed. The third most interesting site I visited was an unnamed pond accidentally formed by a nearby canal in the Munka industrial area. This site had a high diversity of ducks like the migratory northern shoveler, garhwal, the northern pintail. I also observed a range of waders including the threatened Bartel Goatwit alongside these huge flocks of ducks. This pond had the highest number of birds among all the sites that I visited. So these ponds, we previously did not know that uh, ponds are also uh, a very important place for such a large number of migratory species. So we had nearly 30-40% of our of the bird list that we had were migratory species and that's a huge proportion to have inside a city. So Deliards are very lucky in the sense that they are part of this evolutionary phenomena of migration where the birds have not stopped using the ponds of Delhi for whatever reasons that, uh, you know, some of the reasons we've come out uh, explorations in, the, in our study, but there is still a lot uh, to explore in the sense that how come migratory birds are still able to find uh, Delhi's ponds to be a place where they can spend the entire winter or perhaps to use it as a partial stop. So places like that are very critical in not just conserving our own diversity, the resident uh, species, but they're also very critical in making sure that these uh, global scale phenomena like migrations can continue into the future. So as information like this gets enhanced and as it gets more and more available uh, for cities like Delhi and hopefully other cities in the country as well, 
I am hoping that it will percolate down into the management where people will be able to see the pond for what it is and not for just being a garden or just being an entertainment space, but having an add on element of inviting our feathered friends, a large majority of whom in the winter are from outside countries because India is one of the major uh, countries along the Asian flyway, the Asian migratory flyway. The larger National Capital Region, or NCR, that includes Delhi, lost 38% of its wetlands between 1970 and 2014, mainly to encroachments, construction and pollution from sewage and solid waste. The pressures on urban ponds are enormous, as the urban built-up area of Delhi expands and the city's population grows. Before <laughs> तो द्वार का बनने के बाद जो है ना ये गंद हुआ ये तो सफेद पानी हो गया The point is we are always looking up at science to resolve problems Largely think about these wetlands have existed without you know western science or you know water chemistry science they have existed on their own existed with the knowledge of people living around those. So what has gone wrong is the connection people have with these systems. If you care, well, your shirt is always sparkling green, your wetland isn't. You are disconnected. These, uh, you know, uh, these ponds, these Johards, where your life, but your colonies, your, your rituals, everything was around these wetlands. And then suddenly you have piped water supply. Once you have piped water supply, if you have water in my house 24-7, why should I bother about this system? Why not fill it up, create more you know, apartments which give me more price? So attitudes change, behaviors change. And if we can get this connection right, I think things will start improving. In terms of vulnerability, yes, they are pretty highly vulnerable. Anything that you do, so stop the inflow, since the volume is not very large, it will die on its own or take out too much of groundwater. Even if you don't, uh, you know, tap the surface flow, take out too much of groundwater, the water levels will recede. So they're very sensitive in that matter. But on the other side, the opportunities of re rejuvenation are also the highest. You don't need a very complex project. You do certain things right, the pond would come back. If you ensure that water flows are clear, if, if you ensure that pollution is treated, if, they, if the boundaries are maintained, Everything would be fine. Everything would be fine. So vulnerability, yes, but also high opportunities. That is what I'll say. According to Rawal and the team, how a pond is managed by various local and government bodies influences the number and types of birds using it. For instance, pouring concrete on the pond's peripheries as part of beautification initiatives reduced space for birds such as sandpipers and wagtails that feed on worms on the muddy banks. Adding shrubs and non-native trees on the sides of ponds to increase green areas altered the natural ecology. They primarily attracted non-wetland bird species. So what we would uh, look at in terms of management would be to leave the marshy and to leave the muddy area alone for you know a couple of meters if possible five to ten meters so that the pond ecosystem itself can uh, be proliferated and it can help with bringing in birds that are attracted to the pond rather than to the vegetation on the side. So wetlands have been sort of a second child in Indian conservation and also a lot of conservation efforts worldwide which is uh, perhaps part of the very important part of the reason why they also are one of the most endangered habitats in the world. There is so little attention given that in India, for example, we've had only one national exercise for mapping wetlands. And that exercise has um, 
more or less excluded any water body that was less than two and a half hectares or five hectares in size, and those are mapped only as what is known as point uh, mapping. So they are not really traced out in the sense of the shape and the form. The Wetland Authority of Delhi has listed 1,040 water bodies in the city in an ongoing effort to conserve wetlands. All the city's water bodies will be identified and mapped for the first time. Their aim is to eventually notify them as wetlands to legally protect them for long-term conservation. But the focus would be on the city's larger wetlands first. Wetlands big and small are disappearing globally three times faster than forests. Regardless of their size, each plays a role in providing us with water, buffering floods, sheltering wildlife, and much more. As Indian cities expand, studying and protecting these urban wetlands on the margins can help plan the urban expansion while losing the least amount of wildlife and natural spaces.